Hey guys, my name is Pierre. I'm an on-set visual effects technician on shows that you might have heard of like Star Trek Strange New Worlds or Gen V on Amazon Prime, which is one of my favorites. Today I'm going to be showing some producing hacks that I'm doing to get started and to get the project moving. So last week I talked about feedback, the whole process of feedback earlier on in the process of producing the movie. So I'm going to add another component to that process now and that is Unreal Engine itself. So I already know that for my movie, I'm going to be using a lot of Unreal Engine 5 in my movie, at least half of the movie itself. By the time I get to screenplay format, I'm going to be ready to start hiring people, different types of artists, different crew to be on set with me, and different types of visual effects people that can work with Unreal Engine, paying for location, paying for transport, paying for lodging, paying for all that stuff, and actors and so forth. That's all going to happen when I go to screenplay format. But before I go to screenplay format, while I'm still in the treatment format, I'm actually going into Unreal Engine right now. And I'm going to look at the different locations that they have as samples or things in the marketplace that I can make use of right now that could be used as a template for different locations. A lot of the times when I'm writing the actual treatment of the story itself, and if I get stuck in something, or I don't know what to do next, or I don't know how to link something, I'll just look in the marketplace and I'll see some really cool levels, some really cool environments that other artists have already created. And it allows you to download the actual, whatever it is, the asset or the level or the environment, and you can walk around through it. And you can get some ideas for blocking, you get some ideas for different scenes, you get some ideas for the story overall. And that's a really good idea because by the time I go to screenplay format, I already have in my mind, in my head, what things are going to look like. Say, for example, there's some scenes that we're going to be shooting that are going to be way too expensive, way too big to actually produce in real live action location. It's going to be Unreal Engine. For example, there's going to be a scene in which people are in the center of the room, the actors are in the center of the room, rather than having to go to some, I don't know, U.S. military base that's really sophisticated or whatever it is, or a Canadian one if that exists, they can, we can just do it in Unreal Engine in the middle of a green screen. And inside of the center of the room, we actually use real physical tables, chairs, equipment, monitors, as well as weapons. And then in the green screen around the room, that's all going to be 3D in Unreal Engine. But to the viewer, to the audience, they won't know the difference because it's going to be seamless. We make the furniture match what's in the 3D world so that it can just look like as if it goes on and on like a huge weapons bay or a transport bay or whatever it might be. But it gives me an idea of how things are going to look and I can easily pass it on as references, reference material to, my, to the artist that I actually hire to do to customize it and to make it more personal nor for my movie so that people won't recognize it. You don't really want audiences to say, oh, I recognize that level from a music video that I saw on Instagram the other day. No, you don't want that. So this is a really good hack and here's how it works. I open up Unreal Engine here and then I'll go into this top tab here that says Marketplace. Once I'm in the Marketplace here, what I do is I just go to, um, like say for example, I was looking, here's one right here. This is actually part of the showcase uh, that Unreal Engine puts together. So let's go look at the level of detail within some of these assets and these worlds here. So you can click on the pictures and scroll around and it gives you an idea of what the creator did. And don't forget that when you, if you do decide to purchase these and download these, maybe these types of environments or worlds, you can easily make changes. You can move them around. Everything is, is open to change within Unreal. I really like some of the textures that they do here with the rust and the old and the decay. All these textures here is really what makes it far more realistic when uh, shooting. Like you see some decay and some weathering on some of this metal, on these metal grates here. That is really what's going to sell realism. So say I was searching for a command center. This gives you an idea of some of the things that they have. 
and it doesn't have to be the exact word command center. You could use like a control room, a computer room, um, a monitoring station, and usually they'll have everything you need in there for that type of scene. Here's another one here that looks pretty decent. Um, I like the windows. I like how like it's a separate room here so you can have some kind of quarantine with inside this room and this is more like the observation station where the commanders and scientists could be located the scenes could take place and the nice thing too is that all this stuff here could be recreated so you can build it out so that it's more practical so for example if we wanted to use this room and have this these windows here um, what we can do is we can build out this area here in the center of the room um, with our own chairs. You know, we don't have to build the chairs, we can just buy them. But this stuff here, we could just add a, a silver table and remove this stuff and have all the actors in the center of the room here around the room when we're shooting it in a practical soundstage. It's all green screen. And so you just see the outside of the base and we can make it look seamless. I really like this idea of having the other side here where inside it's quarantined and you have some kind of uh, experiments or pods in there or it could be stasis tubes or stasis chambers or whatever it might be. The only thing you got to watch out for when you're searching through some of these bases is you don't want it to look too gamey, like as if you're playing a video game because then it's not going to sell well on screen. It's going to look fake. So you want to get with something like this right here. See, you can see some textures here, some lighting. It's wet, but it's also reflecting the light. Well, Unreal Engine allows us to um, move around in the world and the reflections will update in real time. That's brand new. The software is filled with all these new tricks that make that possible in the most least expensive way without having to use much computing power. It's amazing what they were able to accomplish. They're far and beyond way ahead of many other softwares that have been on the market for many years um, that traditional visual effects houses use. Say, for example, the characters within the story have to go into a hangar to go steal a vessel or go steal a ship or something to get out of there. Well, I'll just look up hangar up here. And there's usually a bunch of pretty cool ones in here that are pretty close to photorealistic as possible certainly to a point where you'll be able to get away with it. I know we'll be, I'll be able to get away with at least many different angles within some of these environments. And I'm pretty certain and pretty confident that I'll be able to um, trick the shot enough so that uh, it'll look seamless and everybody will think that we did it on location or something. Or at the very least, the visual effects was top notch. Um, so here's one here that I really like, the sci-fi hangar done by 1D Studio. It's an environment you can usually tell how well things do based on what has already sold. So it gives you an idea. You can click on into the level here, into the world, and scroll around in the different images and just see, get an idea of different angles. This looks like some kind of generator on wheels. You got some bay doors here. Looks like some kind of control uh, floor on a, some elevated platform with some monitors overlooking the prized position technology in the center of the room here. But overall, this one looks pretty cool. And he put some atmospherics, looks like, or they put some, some smoke in here to make it look more realistic. They made it dark, which is a really good trick that we use in visual effects to make things look more realistic. So this is a possible one that I would use. Um, certainly when it comes to the writing, it, it definitely helps a lot when you're um, planning things out. This one right here sold 47 times and for 50 bucks a piece. So that tells you a lot. That tells you that it's either going to be really highly photorealistic or very creative. Like I'm looking at it right now and the textures on the floor look really good. That looks real. Even the textures on some of the, the boxes here um, look real. The door compared to the, the lighting, the ceilings, all this looks like as if this would pass easily. Um, the photorealistic test. That's really the litmus test when you're choosing these levels here of what will work on camera and what, what won't. 
So something like this, this could work for corridors, um, uh, walking and talking scenes. Um, when they're transporting from one room to the next, you want to get a scene like that, like this here, where um, there's a lot of corridors to choose from. The only issue is, is that, like I said, you want to keep these so that these are more references for your artists and don't use these directly because if you make a movie and you're putting a lot into your movie and then all of a sudden everybody recognizes where this is from, this world, whether it's a game or a music video or they see it on Instagram everywhere, it just brings down the value of your movie, the production value of it overall in the mind of the audiences. So like I said, you want to just use these as reference images or reference assets. Yeah, this guy right here, I actually have him in my cart. He put the price up about at least $200 since I last had put this on my cart. But this is a really cool sci-fi hanger. It looks really real. Um, the prized possession to piece of technology will obviously go in the center of the room here. But you can see the floors and the grates, the silvers and the lighting. Uh, it just looks really top notch. This is something that um, would really work. You know, obviously when we're looking at it like this, this is like a full wide angle or more like an establishing angle where it's a very short field of view. So you would only see a few seconds of this kind of shot where you see this much information, this the size of it and scope of it. But when you get into the characters that are here and you start getting medium shots and close-ups of the characters or just full three-quarter shots of the characters, the rest of the world just looks a lot more realistic because we're not necessarily paying so much attention to the environment. It's more just there and we're believing it. The audience is believing it a lot more easily. So this is one, just an example in here. Outside of that hangar, it looks like this is where the atmospheric suits are stored. So these benches here can be replaced with real world practical. This can be shot on green screen. And then we can have the actors on both sides here and move the cameras around to in the front here, uh, facing this way, in the front here, facing this way. We can have shots where there's cameras facing that way where the actors are standing here talking to the other actor standing here and going back and forth and we can have some conflict we can even have a fight in the middle of it here because there's conflict obviously these looks like stasis tubes or some sort don't look very realistic so that would have to be removed or replaced or enhanced but it gives you an idea here how much we have to work with i want to be clear that unreal engine is simply a tool that we can utilize it's not going to take over production not going to take over the industry. LED walls are maybe for a fraction of the sets that exist out there today because they're very expensive. So if you're a producer like myself or you're looking to produce some kind of material, whether it's a feature film or music video or whatever it might be, I definitely recommend that you make use of the tools that already exist today. Get familiar with what's going on and what's out there, what's available in terms of the technology, the pricing of it, um, knowing the idea of what it would require in terms of building some of these worlds. So it gives you an idea of what they sell for a marketplace, some of these worlds. And then when you start getting quotes from different 3D artists or visual effects artists or production houses, you have a much better idea of what is a realistic quote, and what is something that's totally bonkers. Um, and it just helps you prepare um, your producing journey far more easily and conveniently. And it also expands your awareness on what is possible to be able to produce something really great without having to spend tens of millions of dollars. And the more you can do that, the better of a producer you become. And ironically enough, the better of a producer you become with spending less money, you actually get far more money than you actually need to produce something. And the irony is ridiculous. It's always like that. When you don't need it, you always get it. And you get more and more and it just snowballs like that. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, peace.